Okay, I tried to follow up a little bit on Johanna and tried to introduce you the GPCRD project. I have to admit uh, that we are coming actually a little bit from a different community, also applying the tools and um, the community which actually focus on studying GPCRs, including coupled receptors, you might have heard about. And at the time, um, we are really interested in understanding the functionality and of course the numbers are very important. But at that time, we were coming across that there was no data transparency and it was so complicated to compare with other results. We thought we really have to make a step forward and combine a little bit of forces. And in this respect, we combined forces within Europe, within the GPCR community. We have about 10 labs um, Spain, we have Germany, we have Poland, Switzerland, Denmark, and also Sweden. And we have also some support actually from um, Stanford University. And we came up with our objective that we wanted to generate the kind of first prototype of a database that was able to store simulations dedicated to GPCR dynamics. And second, we thought, okay, we also want to make the first effort to generate the first <coughs> That data set which can be actually um, submitted to this database. And at that time, we had um, kind of 91 unique GPCR layer complexes that had been crystallized, and that was kind of a second goal. And of course, the benefits are clear. Uh, on one hand, we really promote data transparency, and we really try to intend it also to pr um, promote reproducibility. Uh, other researchers could actually explore GPCR data and overall we would actually just accelerate GPCR research. So the GPCR and the database the main features was we wanted to be able to deposit and also to st storage data. Um, then you have to quite provide query tools, of course. Next, big challenge was actually visualization. But we were really lucky at that time because Johanna and the people around Johanna had already started the NGLV and the MD server. So it was just the right time to start with that. And we provide some basic analysis tool just for the quick view and to quick uh, get an impression of the simulation involving RMSD progression, statistics about ligand receptor interactions, or also interaction network dynamics, which was actually support from um, Rasmus and AJ from Stanford University. And extras, of course, we really want that people deposit their simulations there and that they obtain actually really a citable um, ID like a DOI and also MD ID identifier for citations and papers. And last, also that non-MD experts can actually easily browse and visualize the database. So just for you also to understand a little bit the progress of the evolution, we also came up with this idea, let's say, at the middle end of 2016, and then we were able to come up with a certain prot first prototype to the end of 2017. Um, in parallel, we also started the simulation project where we combined the expertise of the GPCR people to curate the structures, to set up simulations, also to simulate them, and currently we are actually analyzing the data and we expect actually to help out our first publications on that and of course in future we want to extend the server and also kind of kind of uh, initiate a second simulation uh, project on new crystallized structures so what is maybe interesting interesting because at the beginning we didn't know where to start so also we had to look around so what kind of information are we going to gather together and we kind of created this database using the philosophy of the PDB and also um, of the GPCRDB database, which has been existing already for, also for 15, 20 years now. And what does it mean? We really kind of collect very detailed information about the components in the simulation system, about the protein, about um, yeah, the, um, of if there are any mutants, and also about small molecules like what is in the simulation, like ligands or lipids. Um, a second thing is for the reproducibility, that we really try to uh, collect the simulation of the system preparation and the dynamics protocol. And finally, what is important, that you can 
Not that you don't have to install locally any software, that you can really browse it um, without needing any special software. So yeah, I just want to show you a first prototype, um, so which you can actually reach from that website down there. Um, we have first a query uh, browse, simulation browser for element and simulation browser. So you can search, for instance, for element which you want to find in the simulation, like Natural node, and add it to your to your browser. <coughs> you can also think, oh, I want a simulation with Form C. You add it again to your browser, and you can check if there are any hits that match that search. Here we have two um, hits, then you can click on that, you get information to the info, uh, to the simulation, software force, your memory, timestamp, delta, you need also to experiment the data, and you can actually download the simulation data. The next thing is to visualize, which was really helpful in implementing the earlier. As you can see on the left side, you can right away uh, play the simulation and also select what you're interested in, so it picks up right away what kind of components are in the simulation. You can show them over here, or you can also select in a very specific way by atom selections or system <coughs> selection. Or what we do very specific for GPCRs, we know they're very highly conserved residues and motives for different classes, which you can show you very easily if you just click on it. It's very interactive. On the other side, we have the analysis, which contains Player plots, interaction maps, distance, arms, the interaction, and which is also very interactive. So if you play it, you see right away here the player plot um, actualizing. You can show, summarize, or you can also then interactively pick on something which will be visualized right away in in here a certain connection between certain transmembrane helices, for instance. So this is basically was the first prototype. <coughs> Um, which I think was coming out already quite nicely. Uh, just to give in, I, I mean, everybody's probably aware of it, what kind of um, advantage you have if you can collect data like that. In our simulation project, we could now simulate all the different types of GPCRs. And just to check, for instance, of if the uh, simulation protocol, which we suggested within the community, works actually well, you can just look for the, in the complex here for the ligand stability. And if you check, you can see for a lot of them it works quite nicely, but you can also right away come up with cases where the simulation protocol doesn't work that nicely. You can discuss and go back and see what is missing there. Um, so also, I should just jump over this. It's another case what we actually analyzed. I think what is more important for you guys is looking to the submission system, what kind of information we're actually collecting. And as I told you, we're kind of inspired by the uh, PDB. Um, so we have actually different steps for the submission, which goes information for protein for the small molecules, for the complex which you simulate, and also for the <coughs> dynamics information. Just quickly, for the general information, for instance, the first step, the protein, we get rid of the uniprot, the uniprot we get automatically retrieve the sequences, which is important because in simulations you don't usually use the byte a lot of times in the crystal structures there are mutants, so you can just click that and add actually the mutant sequence here, um, so that we can actually store all this kind of sim uh, information. Also for all any uh, other types of small molecules, because we believe really wanted to uh, provide a platform which is searchable um, and um, um, with other databases. We collect here the STF files, we link them with the CAMEL. We have then um, really kind of uh, different descriptions like the inky key or also other smiles which are really easy to search on our browser to come and to find the right simulations which are linked to them. And then we can actually define if these molecules are co crystallized or if they belong to the bulk of the simulation. Um, then we, of course, Need and can upload our simulation files. And this is important the starting files for simulation, like coordinates, topology, trajectory files, simulation parameters, other files which include the simulation protocol. And at the end, we have kind of a summary of simulation components, and which you kind of see here an overview and kind of also summing up the um, number of all the uh, simulated um, atoms and also giving specific information about software, software version, phosphate version, 
and um, some other things. Um, finally, the last slide, I just want to make you aware maybe about the main challenges which we had to face at that moment and which kind of also uh, was driving the development of the server. The first thing is data reproducibility, which we talked a lot before. So therefore, we really decided to store the starting files of the simulations, the coordinates, coordinate files, the parameter files, and um, very important, the simulation protocol. So this can be done for any type of uh, simulation. If they come from Gromax or if they from Charm or whatever, there's no problem actually having, um, let's say, format diversity in that sense. Um, data quality, you can think, OK, um, what is going to be uploaded by the people? We limit it at the moment um, to if people want to upload to peer-reviewed data or data that are going to be published because we believe there should be a certain quality, quality be um, provided. And, so, yeah. so how do you decide if something is going to be published? So what do you Actually, what we do is, um, so people are going to upload, they can use the link, it's not published then, they have to have a private link, they can give this link to the reviewer, and then once this uh, publication is accepted, it can be, it will be published, the data. So if something is not accepted after some point, you just delete it. Yes, exactly. Yeah. This is at the moment, uh, it's just con for different ways of convenience, by the data of quality and also space of storage. It's like, therefore, we decided on that. And what do you do now to make sure that people upload correct files? Mm -hmm. Data check up on upload, this is kind of really also a little bit problematic, um, which has to be still a bit uh, elaborated in our case at the moment. We just check actually small molecules, the coordinates, and let the topology go along. As well as for proteins that the coordinates are okay, and also the sequence, like if you have any mutants, which has been uh, indicated uh, when um, on the submission of PDB files. And <coughs> finally, <coughs> um, visual visualization. I mean, Johanna has shown that already. At that point, we were facing actually, you know, how to um, need special software to display simulations in the browser. They have to be able to stream the simulation data, taking into uh, account the bandwidth, and of course, uh, also 3D uh, visualization. And the solution was actually the NGL viewer power by the WebGL and the ND server. So we're happy about that. Works very nicely. And file formats at the moment. Um, I mean, we can accept different, um, you know, coming out from different uh, um, simulation engines. Um, because, I mean, NGL viewer and Mitrich <coughs> accept quite a lot of different file formats, and basically we're depending on them. Yeah. Uh, where we have actually problems is what kind of simulation techniques, because at the moment we accept classical unbiased MDs, and we know this is, there are a lot of other um, possibilities. We have limited, we do not know at the moment how to treat meta dynamics. Umbra sampling, replica exchange, etc. So what to do with that? We are wondering already of if there should be then just a representative of something because at the end, individual frames, it doesn't make that much sense to look at them, right? It's uh, the analysis of it. So here we still do have a bit of problems to decide what to do. And with respect to this space, and then if we have at the moment, as we are quite restrictive, so we don't need to worry too much, and therefore um, we can say per simulation, we should have um, kind of not more than two gigabytes, but that's that's fine, so there's no problem at all. Yeah, with that, I just wanted to kind of show you a little bit the challenges which we had and how we addressed them. And we have a lot of them we have also already discussed um, today and uh, I think, yeah, let's see if you still have some other ideas and um, maybe also now in the brainstorm, of course, I just don't want to acknowledge also the people, the GPCR and the community which have a lot of developing certain concepts and the people that put their hands on to uh, create the GPCR and the database. Yeah, so I hope now in the coming sessions we'll be going to discuss different things and also if there are any questions, so just open to um, answer them.
questions? So. Uh, so you can also download the track for you yes. just look at it. Yes, okay. yes, yes. So especially so for the reproducibility, <coughs> so the starting yeah. files and the simulation yeah. protocol. Do you have a, uh, uh, yeah, I was trying to do it, but I couldn't really find it. So uh, do you have direct links to the track yes. trees? Yes. So you can also make like a script thing, which is, Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yes. You can do that. Yeah. yeah. Uh -huh. um, at the moment, so we are. We still have the prototype. So we have maybe at the moment thirty simulations uploaded because we still have from the simulation project all the other ones a little bit behind because they are analyzed at the moment. But yeah. so at the they will be now actually pushed to the to, to be published yeah. in here as well. So the, uh, are you planning to go beyond GPCRs or? Yeah, it's a good question. I mean, we, this has been an initiative from the GPCR community, yeah. and um, yeah, I don't know. I yeah. mean, at least for member and proteins could be interesting, maybe yeah. because we could talk with some other people to at least share our experience. Yeah. Um, so but at the moment, it was very specific for the GPCRs yeah. because also the visualizer is very specific in our kind of which kind of details you're showing. Yeah. Yeah, we have a little bit similar thing but that, that now contains all the uh, membranes without any proteins. Mm -hmm. Okay. But I, I, I don't know. Yeah. But, uh, I, have, I, yeah. I think we can talk about it later. Yeah. Yeah. We have time for one more quick question. Yeah. I think the job is actually the first. Thing. This is super awesome, by the way. Um, it looks beautiful too, which is really nice. Um, but the, we should discuss as a community the value of sharing, the, just getting the trajectories in the hands of other people versus being able to enable them to do interactive analysis in the browser, because it inherently just looking at something wiggle is pretty limited in terms of what conclusions we can make. But but then you're you're enabled uh, to do things, or you're enabling people who couldn't do things uh, to do that very easily. So but which one is more important, and are there considerations we have? I completely agree. Therefore, we also just have some basic analysis tools for, uh, because I think if you really want to analyze, you have to download, and this is what we provide. But for instance, also for let's say non-MD experts, at least they can look and look at ligand interaction statistics if this ligand <coughs> interaction, which might be you know for MD expert not a problem, or just maybe using their own scripts and doing it in a more specific way. And but um, yeah, I think um, the download and, and the sharing is probably much more important than providing at the moment the analysis. Uh, there. Is it more of a tool for finding the data that you really want to download and analyze later then? The interactive experience? Again? But is it more than to help people find the right data to download and analyze? Uh, so the, I mean, the, the search should help you to find the right data. You can very specifically say what you're looking for. Um, and yeah, that's, that's basically one of the, the goals of that MD server, yeah. Um, thank you very much. Yeah.